In the future, when you see an aquaponic system, the equipment looks very technical. It is technical, but I, I'm asking you, don't, don't be afraid of that technicality because what's inside of it, the simplicity of it all, the simple part of the science is, is really the fun part. And I can tell you that I don't carry PhDs, I don't carry letters on my back, uh, I have a very uh, simple and real approach and if you want the truth about the future of aquaponics and the truth as we know it for the last three years, uh, just stay tuned. I'll, I'll really help you with that. The question is, what is aquaponics? In a broad overview, uh, aquaponics has been around for at least a thousand years. There is real evidence that the Incans uh, grew fish and water in the same closed loop in a terrace on the side of a mountain. Uh, other countries today still use similar versions that are naturally occurring. What we do here uh, in Deepwater Raft Culture, the 30 years of research, and that's at the UVI system in St. Croix, and that's the system I use here, uh, that was invented by Dr. Ricosi. Uh, there's a lot of citations with his name also Charles Schultz and Don Bailey and I apologize if I miss on other really important people in the industry. Uh, there are five or six different varieties t of ways to grow aquaponically. Um, when your grow bed has certain types of medium in it, be it shale or gravel, you know, the little uh, clay bio balls, whichever you choose. And uh, there's ebb and flow methods. Uh, there are timed flow methods. Uh, here we use something called the deep water raft system. And I like to just abbreviate it, calling it the UVI system. Uh, and it's not in its infancy. It's been around for 30 years. What we stand on and the authority that I talk about is production, production, production. You can raise food in gravel beds and you can raise beds that ebb and flow. Uh, the production is never the same. Uh, we have deep water raft beds and what that really means is that the water is a minimum of 12 inches deep and your raft can be an inch thick, an inch and a half thick, two inches thick. That's really not the point. The point is is that the tremendous root structure that's at the base of these plants uh, is this amazing filter and they need that kind of room to grow. Uh, we have 48 pieces on a four foot by eight foot sheet. I see other systems that have uh, one inch cups, peat pots, uh, some even have two inch cups. Uh, we've come to find out that three inches is really the answer and we use a three inch net pot throughout the entire system. When that happens, uh, the fish are in a compact uh, situation. Uh, so I'm going to use the words uh, unnatural and abnormal. Uh, things that happen unnaturally would be that so many fish would be put into uh, such a small area. And then the results become abnormal, that the, the results are so giant that it's beyond normal. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of fish and I have a tremendous amount of plant production. It can be scaled back to having less fish and still have some comparable plant production. Part of being sustainable and having a commercial farm is exactly this, that we are the largest of the residential systems and the smallest of commercial systems, and it's very sustainable. We, we pay our bills, uh, we can save a little money, and we've taken it to a, a pinnacle where there's an intense amount of fish that we can take out on a daily basis and there's a tremendous amount of plant production. Uh, I rival anybody or we rival and encourage people in general to use deep water raft culture. So in, the, in its present form uh, aquaponics uh, can be scaled down to a very manageable home system that runs on a scant amount of electricity and evaporative loss only. Um, even to a system that I have, which is a very large residential system that makes a commercial amount of money, it still runs on a scant amount of electricity and, a, and a, not a lot of water. I'm connected to water. I'm not a water user.
So the future of aquaponics um, is vast and it, and, it, and it can be amplified anywhere in the world. It does not require a lot of electricity. Uh, you can be connected to water and not be a water user. Uh, you will grow 10 times more on 10 times less. Aquaponics is not a household word. Uh, we're hoping that it will be. Uh, people seem to be... It's not a craze. Uh, it, I, it's really here to stay. It's no longer in its infancy. Aquaponics is at a point where it's going to amplify. Uh, and if you tell to, and they tell to. Or... Um, as we do here, we, we foster, educate, we, uh, we help develop other people. Literally, I have some people who come and stay and work for a while. I have people who come for two days. I have people who come for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, we have grown a business where you didn't buy a business. Uh, anybody can buy an aquaponics company, but growing an aquaponics company, and that's the future of aquaponics. The future of aquaponics really requires you to uh, figure out your your own scale and size, and then and then take it to what I believe here is its most conventional and and biggest and wise portion. I have three three thousand square foot buildings and room for a couple more. It's complicated to manage uh, that much affair, and it's not for everybody. I live where I work. I think that that's real important in aquaponics. That's why backyard systems are, are really, really important. I think that um, anybody who sees the equipment thinks that it's highly scientific, but the science is incredibly simple. The, the equipment may look technical, the, the science is incredibly simple. It's really taken me close to uh, a lifetime of experience to amass the amount of information that I can impart on people in a short period of time. Uh, I've managed to, over 22 years, culminate a lot of skill sets. There are numerous skill sets involved in having a large residential, small commercial operation, um, interfacing with uh, local and city people, and then all the way to interfacing with uh, the marketing and the, the office end on how to collect and distribute the money. This has become uh, a real example. I've kind of, we're starting to become an authority on exactly a 2.2 acre system where a family can live and work. It's sustainable, they can earn a living. Uh, I also have the ways of explaining to you how to make a smaller system for your backyard that's bigger than a hobby, that can feed you and the people around you, uh, food safety, uh, and then just the, the, the brilliance. There's nothing finer than having superior, high quality, fewer finer, super nutritious food at your access all the time. The past in aquaponics, even if we go back a couple centuries, People used uh, native species, fish that were available to them. And in its present form, uh, I bring in fish uh, that are table food. Um, and in the future, uh, people can revert back to what's available to them locally. Um, they can use ornamental fish. Uh, there's varieties and super varieties of, of fish that can be used for aquaponics. If you've ever had a fish tank and you've ever wanted to have some plants, uh, aquaponics is for you. There is a whole new world for you all out there. Uh, together, you, we, all, we can take small amounts of fish and use and utilize every portion of their action and make glorious plants with it. Aquaponics is simply put, it's the sharing of fish and plants together. It's the easiest way to say it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, aquaponics is not a new science. It's been around a long time. It's not in its infancy. It's, it's blowing and going. And if you want to be a part of it, come on on board. We'll help you any way we can.